Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. But today what we're going to do is a teardown and reverse engineering of this guy. This is a power plug pack for an unpowered microphone. But before we get started with this, we need to do a little background to explain uh, what this is for. Now there are lots of different kinds of microphones, but the one we're talking today about specifically is the electric microphone. The electric microphone is a type of condenser microphone. And a condenser is uh, uh, an old way of calling a capacitor. So the way a condenser microphone works is you have uh, two plates. You put a charge onto one of the plates and uh, either that plate or the other plate, whichever, uh, are free to vibrate. And what happens as you change the distance between the plates, uh, the uh, uh, charge on the plates has to change or the voltage has to change and so what you get is a translation between sound waves you know the the pulses which cause the plates to move back and forth and uh, electricity so you can convert an audio signal to something electric that's a, b a basic condenser microphone specifically with an electric microphone what they do is they a apply a coating to one of the plates that permanently holds a charge. So let's show this in red. Kind of like that. <clears throat> what that does is uh, the uh, microphone is always ready to go. It does not need any kind of uh, polarizing voltage to be able to convert uh, sound to electrical signals. The problem that electric microphones have is that the output impedance of the microphone is pretty high. It cannot move a whole bunch of charge and so the signal coming out of the uh, microphone capsule is not usable without some type of amplification. And oftentimes that amplification is uh, stuffed directly into the uh, microphone capsule. To amplify uh, the signal coming out of the electric microphone, the most common way is to use a JFET. What the JFET does is that the uh, base input of the, I guess this would be the gate input of the uh, uh, JFET is a uh, high impedance and so is the capsule. And so the uh, JFET doesn't load down the capsule uh, 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 ruining the signal so to speak or you know decreasing it and now the JFED can reproduce uh, what the capsule sees by you know the control of the <clears throat> gate the problem with this is that now the uh, JFED requires power the common way to provide power to this uh, JFED uh, common source amplifier is by having a pull-up resistor to some sort of a power source the uh, voltage of the power source and the uh, resistance value uh, sets what kind of gain you get out of this amplifier. Uh, but the uh, whatever you're hooking up, hooking it up to is expecting AC because that's what a uh, common uh, audio signal is, is AC. And so you have a uh, a DC blocking capacitor which blocks the bias that you're putting onto the amplifier. Uh, simple electric microphones like lapel microphones or shotgun microphones, stuff that's meant to uh, plug, you know, support other equipment like cameras, uh, comes in one uh, one of two categories. They're either uh, self-powered, meaning they have batteries inside, and what that looks like on here is that this resistor and power source are built directly into the microphone, and all you get is the output here and here or they're built in an unpowered manner. In the unpowered manner, uh, or configuration I guess, uh, what you get is the JFET and that JFET goes directly to the output, no power is applied. The, uh, the power source, the resistor, and the capacitor have to be applied externally. 
Uh, many devices such as cameras, computers, etc., stuff that you would plug a uh, electric microphone into will provide a, a plug-in power to the device, meaning that this capacitor, resistor, and power source are built directly into. But sometimes they don't. And this is the reason for this uh, uh, plug pack uh, device. Uh, this plug pack is going to provide this resistor and this capacitor so that an unpowered microphone has power. So what we're expecting to find inside this guy is some resistors and some capacitors. Now that we've uh, take, uh, discussed the uh, background for uh, what this device actually does, let's go ahead and hop over to the bench and pull it apart. There are not many devices like this out on the internet. For whatever reason, uh, unpowered uh, uh, electric microphones don't get a whole lot of loving. So it actually took me a while to uh, find this, specifically a stereo version. There's a a bunch of mono versions, but stereo, so for whatever reason, doesn't get any loving. And the case this comes in is reasonably decent. You have a, an on-off switch over here, kind of a slider switch, and then you have a mono stereo switch here. Uh, this uses a single AA battery. You have a little compartment that pops open that's nice, and it has a little uh, no, belt clip or strap clip, clip on it. Uh, what this does, I have no idea. The, this uh, didn't come with any kind of manual or instruction, so whatever this arm does beats me. Uh, the way this uh, plug pack is going to work is you put a battery inside, duh, you turn it on, and then your microphone plugs into the headphone jack here, and then this plugs into whatever the device that you want to power the microphone with. To open it up, looks like first we pull the screws out for the uh, clip, like that. Gently try and pry it off of there, like that. And then, yeah, that was hiding a screw right there. Go ahead and pull you out, and then gently try and split the case. There we go. And here's the board. Uh, let me uh, pry the board out of there. I'm gonna have to do this off camera because the, the wires on this look pretty thin. And then we'll take a look. Getting this board out was actually kind of a pain in the butt because the switches uh, sort of press fit into the uh, sliders that you see on the outside. But now that we've got it out, as I said that it's most likely very, very simple inside. We have two capacitors, two resistors, two switches, and the, you know, the input and output. And that's really all we were expecting to see, that these are the resistors that pull up uh, on the uh, electric microphone capsule, and then these are the DC blocking capacitors for the output, and that's really about it. Uh, the circuit board is actually thinner than your standard it was at 1.6 millimeter. This is probably half that. So this is probably a 0.8 millimeter board, which makes it a little flimsy. And the layout on the back doesn't look terrible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this layout here and uh, put together a a schematic for it and I'm gonna put it up on the board and we're going to uh, walk our way through it. To kind of give you a feel of how I work my way through uh, reverse engineering this guy, uh, let's start with the power. You have the, this is the positive side of the uh, battery here. You can see it right there. 
that positive wire comes up here and is soldered to this big old glob. If we kind of turn the board sideways, we can see that that big glob is across these two uh, pins of the switch. And this is kind of a standard slider switch. So the idea being is that the center pin, the common pin, is either shorted over here to the left or over here to the right. When it's in its current position over here to the left, all it's doing is just touching these two pins together. But since the pins are already touching on the bottom, it doesn't really do anything. If we move the switch over to the right position, uh, the switch takes power from the center pin and moves it over to this right pin over here, which is this guy right here. The trace for that is pretty short. If we follow this trace through this way, we see that there are two uh, pins on this trace. And if we just kind of rotate the board around, we can see that those two are this guy and this guy for the resistors. So the switch turns the power on and off to these two resistors. Now that we've uh, looked at the power, we can uh, work our way through the signal. Uh, this uh, headphone jack is actually kind of confusing. I really had to uh, look deep inside to figure out which pins are which. But the this contact here is the ground. This connects to the, the, the base of a headphone jack. Uh, let's see, that connects to this guy here and then this guy and these two which are the same thing the strap goes all the way around so they're using this contact as a mount also uh, connects to the other two contacts this one and this one and since this guy is going to be symmetrical it really doesn't matter we don't care which one is which and so let's uh, follow our uh, signal wires. So this guy comes over here and uh, touches the switch right here in one spot. Keeps following down this way and hits this guy here. And if we remember, the guy over here uh, is uh, the resistor and this resistor is actually straddling from here to here. And so what we have is this is the pull up resistor that pulls up this line over here. And now we follow this line over this way and we get to the capacitor and then the capacitor jumps from here to here. And this is going to be the DC blocking capacitor. And then this goes to the output cord. Our next uh, signal path here is uh, these two contacts here, which come down this way, go through the uh, uh, another pin on the switch here. And we'll talk about the switch here in a second. They come over this way, and what's on the other side is the other end of the resistor. So this is going to be the pull-up for the other signal line. Let me move this out of the way. That signal line now comes around this way. And we get to here, and if we look on the other side, that's the other capacitor here. <clears throat> and that capacitor jumps us, let's see here. Yep, it's kind of sitting diagonally, so that capacitor jumps us from here to here. And then this line connects to this contact over here, which is our other output. This is the other uh, DC blocking capacitor. And finally, Maybe not necessarily finally. Uh, we're going to follow the ground. The ground connects here, which is a contact on the switch here, and then comes over here and just disappears. And you might think, well, where, where did it go? If we look up top, the ground actually connects up to the case of the switch. And I think what they were uh, doing in this layout here is they're using the case of the switch as a cheater to uh, jump over traces because if we follow the other side of that case it comes over here comes over this way and connects up to the uh, case of the other switch comes out here comes around this way and connects up to where the ground is connected for the battery and the ground connected for the output so the uh the the switch case is serving dual purpose. It mounts the switch in 
tightly, allows you to solder it in, but is also a link for the ground. Uh, it's clever, I mean this board is quite tiny, but I, I can't say that I'm a huge fan because this isn't going to be you know, super well conducting material, it's not copper, it's probably some sort of steel. And that might add a little extra resistance to this ground path. Now finally, let's take a look at the switch here. This is the mono stereo switch. And it's going to be similar to the power switch we had over here that we have three pins. And depending on the position of the switch, that switch either shorts these two pins together or these two pins together. And uh, this is this uh, uh, mono stereo switch. If we look over here, the two traces here touch these two this one and this one pins on the switch and this one's not connected to anything. So what the switch does is when it's in its left position like that, it shorts this pin and this pin together, but since this pin isn't connected to anything, it doesn't do anything. But when you flip the switch to the right here, it uh, shorts the left and right audio channels together. So now I'm gonna throw the schematic for this up onto the board and we'll take a look at it there. This is the uh, final schematic of the power box. We have our input jack right here and the ring here is grounded and that means that the uh, this point, this point on the battery and this point on the output jack are all tied together. This is your uh, mono stereo switch. It connects the two lines up to the switch and by sliding this around, you can either uh, connect these two together, which does nothing, or if you connect these two together, it ties the two audio sources together. Then we have our power switch. Uh, same kind of thing as the mono stereo switch. Depending on where you uh, place the switch, you can either put it on the left, which just ties the two battery. This is uh, the symbol for the battery uh, contacts together, which does nothing. Or if you slide it over to the right here, it ties the battery to the two resistors, which uh, are 320 ohms each. Which this, oops, forgot to put a little splice points right there. Uh, then uh, this provides the biasing power out to the microphone here. And then over here we have uh, 2.2 microfarad ceramic capacitors and then that comes out to the uh, uh, output jack. If you have any questions or comments you're welcome to put them uh, down below. And uh, don't forget to be sure to give me a big old thumbs up uh, and thank you for watching.